Hello my dear students myself Geeta Israni will be teaching you English subject I hope you all are safe and taking care of yourself in lockdown आप सबको अब अच्छा टाइम मिल रहा है ट्वेल्थ बोर्ड की स्टडीज करने के लिए आई विल बी टेकिंग योर पोइट्री सेक्शन एंड द वेरी फर्स्ट पोएम इज सॉन्ग ऑफ द ओपन रोड बाय वॉल्ट विटमैन विटमैन हु इज एन अमेरिकन पोएट वॉज बॉर्न इन लॉन्ग आइलैंड एंड ग्रीव इन न्यूयॉर्क The poet here expresses his open thoughts over journey of life and he is also considered as the father of free verses free verses means here the poem doesn't have any rhyming words or rhyming schemes now i will recite the poem first and then explain you a foot and light hearted i take to the open road healthy free the world before me the long brown path before me leading wherever i choose henceforth i ask not good fortune i myself am good fortune in this first stanza the poet clearly expresses his feelings and he wa he what he plans to do in future wo keh raha hai ki woh chal pada hai on his foot a foot a foot means walking down and he is light hearted light hearted means woh bahut khush hai cheerful hai wo chahta hai apni journey ko start karna isse hame ek baat aur pata chalti hai ki he is very healthy fit bimar nahi hai woh he is free from all the mishaps of this life he is also not upset not sad dukhi nahi hai woh about the fact that he is going to start on his onward journey the long brown path leading before me wherever i choose he knows the path that he has chosen and that is brown in color iska matlab hai ki woh sadak jo usne choose ki hai वह पक्की सड़क नहीं है वह मिट्टी की सड़क बनी हुई है इट्स नॉट अ टार्ड रोड इट इज नॉट अ वेल डेवलप्ड रोड इट इज अ रोड विच इज कवर्ड बाय मट एंड अगेन इन द लास्ट लाइंस ऑफ द स्टेंजा हेंस फोर्थ आई आस नॉट गुड फॉर्चून आई माई सेल्फ एम अ गुड फॉर्चून से हमें यह बात पता चलती है कि द स्पीकर इन द पोएम स्पीक्स अबाउट the positive approach in life he does not depend upon any good luck good fortune and he does not feel that everything good is going to happen with him and woh chahta hai ki kuch bhi ho jaye woh aage badhte jayega aur woh chalte jayega jo bhi path ho us jo jo usne jo bhi path choose kiya hai वह उसे किसी ने फोर्स नहीं किया है उसे किसी ने वहां पर उसे कितने भी हार्डशिप्स आए रुकावटें आए वह चलते ही जाएगा और वह खुद को गुड फॉर्चून समझ रहा है वह किसी और को गुड फॉर्चून नहीं समझता है ना ही उसे गुड फॉर्चून की कोई जरूरत है मैं आशा करती हूँ आई थिंक दैट यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द मीनिंग ऑफ फर्स्ट स्टेंजा then now moving on to the figure of speech that are in the first stanza the figure of speech is the first figure of speech is in the title itself song of the open road now in this line you can see that the figure of speech is personification why personification because the road is being personified as singing a song jo road hai use personal person ki quality di gayi hai in animate thing is being given the quality of a person that is singing and so the figure of speech here is personification now the second figure of speech which appears in the first stanza is the sentence a foot and light hearted the sentence 
is not arranged in right prose order therefore we will call it as inversion inversion i n v e r s i o n because the sentence is not arranged in right prose order so the figure of speech here is inversion with this we have completed our first stanza now moving on towards the second stanza the second stanza will continue with the same feeling as of with the first stanza henceforth i whimper no more postpone no more need nothing done with indoor complaints libraries querulous criticisms strong and content i travel the open road whimper whimper here means cry cries with fear and pain now here what the poet is saying is that henceforth henceforth means therefore okay he is sure about his journey that he has planned i whimper no more iska matlab hai ki i am not going to complain main kisi ke bare mein koi shikayat nahi karne wala na hi mujhe kisi se koi gila shikwa hai main apne decision ko na hi badlunga na hi postpone karunga what i have decided i will do it that i have decided walking down this road and so the poet says that he does not need anything more from his life he is satisfied he is contented with whatever he is being given to him that is why he says that i don't need anything from anyone use kisi se bhi kuch chahiye hi nahi i am done with complaining i am done with i have completed my all my grudges querulous complaints querulous criticisms here means the same meaning that is the complaining shikayate mujhe kisi se koi shikayat nahi hai meri sab shikayate puri ho chuki hai aur i am i am done with reading a lot of books and i have done with complaining with criticisms i don't need any one no more now here he is strong he is a healthy person and moreover he is contented with his life and so here we have completed our second stanza now let's move on to the figure of speech now the figure of speech in the second stanza done with indoor complaints libraries querulous criticisms here the figure of speech is alliteration kyun alliteration hai kyunki jo c alphabet hai sound of c alphabet complaints and criticism is being repeated for poetic effect so the figure of speech is alliteration now the next figure of speech is uh sentences henceforth i whimper no more here the figure of speech is climax because the words are arranged in ascending order of importance and the figure of speech so here is climax now this here we have completed our second stanza moving on to the third stanza the earth that is sufficient i do not want constellations any nearer i know they are very well where they are i know they suffice for those who belong to them here constellations constellations means influential group of people and suffice suffice means sufficient the poet here wants to say that the he does not include himself to the group of people that is the constellations who are there because he believes that he does not need them use kisi bhi vyaktiyon ki group ki koi zarurat nahi hai he sure 
he is sure that whatever he needs that the earth is going to fulfill all he feels that the earth will suffice and will fulfill all his needs jo earth hai wo sab uski ichhaen puri karne wali hai he does not want any constellations to be any nearer he does not want the support of any individual people or any group in to help him to be with him or to follow him to follow and accept the ideas his views about the life the poet says that i know very well where they are here the poet ye batane ki koshish kar raha hai ki wah santusht hai uski ye feeling hai wo sufficient hai he is satisfied that he is having everything in his life now in this third stanza the poet does not include himself to the group of people that is constellation constellation ki aapko meaning batayi thi group of individuals that is intellectual individuals who are there because he believes that he does not need them use koi zarurat nahi hai unke opinion ki he is sure that whatever he needs he gets from is fulfilled from this earth he also feels that the earth will suffice and will fulfill suffice suffice means fulfill all his needs he does not anyone to support him or anything which is belonging to him now what he wants to say is uh, he is also very much of the views that he is open about the views of his ideas the poet here also says that i know very well where they are now here the figure of speech which is appearing in this poem is alliteration now alliteration the sentence in which there is an alliteration is i know very well i know they are very well where they are now here the alphabet which is being repeated is w so when the alphabet is repeated for poetic effect the figure of speech is alliteration from this we have completed our third stanza in which we have learned that the poet is self sufficient contented he has no grudges use kisi ke sath koi shikayat nahi hai bahut khush hai and is we will find his way to find the happiness moving on to the fourth stanza still i carry my old delicious burdens i carry them men and women i carry them with me wherever i go i swear it is impossible for me to get rid of them i am filled with them and i will fill them in return now here you can see the words delicious burdens unki opposite meaning hai burdens kabhi sweet ho sakte hain delicious ho sakte hain par hamare poet ne un burdens ko bhi unhone delicious karke mana hai now the speaker here admits that he himself is not without his own problems but instead of complaining he relishes them wo khush hai apni complaints nahi karta hai problems ke bare mein wo bahut khush hai aur khushi se usne apni burdens ko problems ko usne apnaya hai that is why he has used the word delicious the reader can see through whitman's diction very clearly when he has made the use of word delicious it has not been done by accident because through that word he conveys the sense of relishing means enjoying he is enjoying he the burdens and enjoying his burdens so here the poet is expressing the burdens as delicious now you do you don't find that uh, this sentence is absurd in meaning to ye figure of speech is sentence mein is uh, stanza mein jo li gayi hai wo uh, delicious burdens ki is 
having an absurd statement it's a figure of speech is paradox whenever there are absurd meaning in the sentence the figure of speech in that sentence will be paradox now another thing which the speaker admits in this stanza is that he carries with him wherever he goes so and this thought is continued in the final lines also the speaker says that he cannot get rid of his problems wo apne problems ko chhod nahi sakta get rid of matlab chhodna he cannot go away wo apne bhag nahi sakta hai problems se instead he and his problems share a symbolic and same kind of sort he is filled with his burdens see you can see the sentence filled i am filled so and in return he fills them the speaker stating here that his burdens do not define him rather he accepts them and carries them with him apne saath lekar wo apne problems ko jo bhi hai use khud ke saath khushi se apnata hai he makes it very clear to us that he is totally at ease and with peace aaram se shanti se baitha hai with facing all the difficulties kitni bhi difficulties aa jaye problems aa jaye par wo jo chaal hai wo chalne ki jo raah hai wo chhodne wala nahi hai he is going to move forward with all those burdens and learning from that experiences एक्सपीरियंस जो भी उसके सामने फेस होते हैं बर्डन आते हैं जो भी है वो उससे खुशी से अपनाता है डिसअपॉइंटेड बिल्कुल नहीं है अपने लाइफ से बिकॉज ही फील्स दैट दीज बर्डन आर अ पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ एवरी इंडिविजुअल्स लाइफ नाउ विथ दिस वी हैव कंप्लीटेड आर पोएम आई होप यू ऑल हैव अंडरस्टूड द मेन जिस्ट ऑफ द मैसेज गिवन बाय द पोएट and do you not think that uh, it is related to our current situation kya ye hamare current situation se nahi related hai hamari jo aaj ke jo time hai hum jo aaj face kar rahe hain lockdown hum ghar pe baithe hain hum kuch kahin pe ja nahi sakte hain par ye din bhi guzar jayega ek naya savera zarur aane wala hai aur isi wajah se hum logo ne aapke liye online lectures shuru kiye hain जिसमें आपकी पढ़ाई की कोई रुकावट नहीं होनी चाहिए ये सोचकर हमने ऑनलाइन लेक्चर्स न्यू इंग्लिश जूनियर कॉलेज ने लॉन्च किए हैं ऑनलाइन लेक्चर्स नाउ द क्वेश्चन विच इज बीइंग मोस्टली आस्ड इन द पेपर इज व्हाट मैसेज इज गिवन इन द पोएम और यू कैन बी आस्ड दैट नाउ यू हैव बीन यू विल बी आस्ड इन योर पेपर द एप्रिसिएशन ऑफ द पोएम Now uh, or the moral which you have learned four marks का question आता है paper में appreciation बताओ moral बताओ आपने क्या सीखा what is your opinion uh, do you think that it's right according to the poet what the poet thinks so the poem uh, the moral of the poem which we have learned today is the poem teaches us to be happy and optimistic as we have everything including freedom. and ample of opportunities hame bhagwan ne sab diya hai we should be happy and optimistic P- positive approach honi chahiye hamari life mein ki hame jo bhi hai hum usse nipat ke dikhayenge one day we will win and another thing another uh, question which is being asked is what is your opinion now what is your opinion about the poem is it nice so what do you think i now what do you think is i think you can write that i think that poem is nice because it encourages us to enjoy the life in healthy and free world it motivates me to fill the heart with immense pleasure of life journey i like this poem so these are your opinions which you can write that if you liked it or if you didn't like it and why did you not like it so uh, you have to write the reason also in this way you have to answer the questions which will be asked in your paper that you have understood the poem 
you can solve the activity based question answers and try to solve it which you will be having in your textbook aapne download kiya hoga textbook textbook aap dekhoge textbook mein aapko jahan par poem complete ho rahi hai wahan par aapko dikhai denge kuch question answers try to solve it and next time i will explain another poem or hope you all will be safe and uh, it's our current situation study hard you have ample of time at home and do like the video if you have liked the video and subscribe it and uh, press the bell icon ki aapko notifications milte rahe be healthy be safe stay home thank you